Go for it. Right. Okay, you. hi. Uh, welcome to the uh, JS, uh, not JS, just core dev IPFS meetup uh, weekly uh, on July the 23rd. Uh, it's nice to have you all here. We uh, Can I please have a note taker volunteer themselves for today? By raising your hand. One. Anybody. Yeah, okay, Jacob, thank you. That's very cool. Um, uh, right, so we are, have now a, uh, a crypt pad. All right, so this is jumping around a little bit for me, but never mind. Uh, updates, let's do a round of updates. It's been a busy week. Um, I am talking, so I'll, I'll go first. Uh, so what I was looking at was, uh, I, uh, this week was um, looking at IPFS.resolve, um, which is slightly different to IPFS DAG resolve. Um, Juan had uh, sent a pull request to JS IPFS API to add that API call. So I was just documenting it in interface IPFS core and adding tests for it there also. Um, they are done and ready. Um, what else? So, uh, I, yeah, so David Diaz was here and unblocked uh, a, uh, an issue with IPLD DAG PB and traversing uh, paths within DAG PB nodes um, to make JS IPLD uh, do something similar to what Go IPFS does. Um, so, I looked at what he'd done already and then uh, hope and sort of finished it and that got merged and released. That's great. Um, and then because that was fixed and, uh, and IPFS Resolve had some tests and a spec, I had a look at what it would take to make JS IPFS also be able to do a J, uh, an, an IPFS Resolve. And turns out it can do some of it. It can't, um, because we don't have IPNS, we can't do uh, DNS lookups, but uh, we can do things like turn in a path. So if you've got a root hash slash, you know, path to a file, we can give it that and it will resolve that as in um, and what resolve means in this context is change that path to the file into a uh, the hash for that particular file. Um, so then I looked at Vasco's uh, IPNS tests, which um, I put a whole bunch of comments on um, and he is steadily uh, fixing that up. So that's all good. Um, uh, and then I released JS IPFS 0 30.1 with a fix for uh, pre-start being called multiple times. And then uh, I also opened an issue for the next version of JS IPFS, which I might now reconsider uh, considering our, we had a conversation about uh, bootstrap and gateway nodes this afternoon with David and Lars and a whole bunch of other people. Um, and we have some action items from that. So I'll probably be reviewing my next week list to be something more like uh, release a new version of JS IPFS with some new bootstrap nodes. Um, but yeah, uh, my original plan was to uh, fix up uh, this pull request that I've got for um, DAG get to use IPLD because it's now unblocked thanks to that um, PR to IPLD DAG PB. Um, and originally I was going to continue working on adding CID base as in being able to specify the base of the CID um, uh, that gets outputted when you IPFS add things. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, and uh, oh, I was also going to try and um, get this pull request for uh, supporting raw leaves and CID base into MFS merged. Um, but yeah, like I say, I might not get all of that done. Um, uh, and there might be a release of JS IPFS in between because D-Web Summit is coming up. Uh, and I'm sorry that was super long, but that was me. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Thank you so much for the update. Oh, lots of stuff happening. Uh, awesome. Can, can perhaps yeah, you said it, but like given my connection is a little bit shitty, uh, could you just clarify if um, on the state of base 32, like do you think we'll get that before next week or? Can you come on that? Um, so base 32, what I've done so far is, is not, it's not um, 
adding or changing the defaults. It's um, adding an option to be able to specify that you want the CID to be a CID version one and encoded in base 32 when you add stuff to IPFS. Um, when I did that, that looked super hacky. I don't know for sure if I'll be able to get it in before the end of the week, um, but I was hoping to try at least, uh, but it would be rad to get it out um, and so before. Uh, before do web summit um, cool okay awesome yeah, yeah. I, I was just thinking that, like you might hit some hiccups with interrupt in go ipfs about like bit swap and like bit swap not understanding um like remember that the problem where like if a CI, if a something is stored with cid v1 on go ipfs uh, and like you ask the cid sorry if you're something is stored on cid v0 on go ipfs and you ask the cid v1 version like our PFS doesn't really know about it. So we might, it, like, it, it's like super cool to have base 32, but at the same time, like doing it super fast will mean that like it will confuse users because users will not understand why the heck like files are not being found on the IPFS. Um, and so we might need to like align um, like a, a roadmap to deploy that feature with IPFS to make sure that the same block can be resolved either through CIDV0 or CIDV1. Right. Um, yeah, I guess. So if you specify like CID base is 32, it's implied that you're specifying a CID version of V1. So, so what I mean is remember the data store issue? Yeah. Of, um, but that, so that's what I mean. It would go in as V1. And so. Yeah. And so if it was added. Okay. Yeah. If it was added to YPFS as V0 then it would miss the, the read. Right, so you're talking about if you've added something already. Yes, yeah, of course, you wouldn't be able to get it back if you added it again and got a different... Um, yeah, yeah, just, just like, um, have that in mind. It, it might mean that it is a lot of work, and so given that there's like so much stuff in the air, probably pick the ones that like, you know you can land and they are top priority, so that they, like, you don't... Uh, chase the rabbit from the hole. <laughs> yes, no, not too much chasing. Um, yeah, I, you're right. I, I don't know exactly what the uh, potential um, issue might be with that until I've looked into it further. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I will. Yeah, make sure. Cool. <laughs> I answer the things I can. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah. Cool. 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 All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, any more questions for Al? Oh, you are leading call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? For me? <laughs> okay, right. Um, so, who else? Who's next here? Uh, VMX. Are you here? Oh, no, he's not. It's not. I'm, sorry. I'm leading and I'm terrible at this. Uh, <laughs> He's not here today, he's not attending, um, but he has given you a update on what he's up to. I'll leave you to uh, in time. And David, you're next. All right, it's me. Uh, I'll go fast and um, ask you questions if you have. So we, we did a virtual session last week, as I want to mention, like we did the connectivity magic like design session, and we got three awesome solutions to really get that uh, IPFS magically feeling of like finding content anywhere on the network to just IPFS. Uh, today we had a follow-up call with the infrastructure team. Um, so just a P2P team, just and the infrastructure team. And we found even a, another solution that's kind of like an intermediary between one and two. Uh, and we are going to deploy it this week so that we, we can like patch files uh, on just IPFS from any place in the network thanks to uh, basically delegated caching, let's call it like that. Um, there's notes on that issue, that you can follow. Then like we shipped just the BFS and just the bureau cares, Woo, finally. Uh, so we now have like clear objectives for this quarter, that's awesome. Um, the D-Web workshops are on the way, like we, <laughs> there's a lot of IPFS stuff at the D-Web Summit. Um, <laughs> like, Eight workshops. Uh, it, it's, it's insane. But it's, I, I don't know how many tells. Um, and so we are preparing those and we are making those like very reusable um, so that other people can then run those workshops. Um, one will be focused on DAPs, another one will be focused on IPLD. Um, the IPLD one, like the, the DAPs one, is focusing a lot of like thinking on like distributed architectures. The, um, the IPLD one is an actual like browser workshopper, so like people can actually code. 
um, while they are doing the workshop is going to be cool. If you're familiar with Node School and you love Node School, you're going to love that one as well. Um, we might reach out to you all to give you the try and run and tell us if it breaks for you. Um, so yeah, did that or still doing that on the bug that like Alan already described and like to me the PR. Thank you so much for finish, finishing, it, finishing it. Uh started like a just a P2P release. As I mentioned in the beginning of this quarter, we went for fair fair. So like let's do like a release of just like P2P soon, uh, just to get into the flow, getting into that tone of like doing like very loud releases. Uh, and then like a bunch of like PR reviews and merge dances as usual. And I did a lot of work on just like test.io from illustrations, uh, review, like writing copy, writing design, like adjusting things. Um, yeah, a lot of work went into that. And so, um, Hopefully we will see that page deployed this week uh, and it's going to be awesome. Uh, that, and that's like pretty much like my top priorities for this week, just PFS.io and the web summit. Um, I might not be able to attend this call this week, given that I'm going to be focused on that event specifically. So I'll try to make it, but it might be hard. And that's it, I'm not blocked anywhere. Any questions for me? Can I get a thumbs up if people manage to hear what I said? Okay, cool. I got everything. <laughs> uh, all right, so yeah, next. Right, uh, cool. Um, and Machi, next, please. So um, I have been rewriting lib P2P and no trust into a bunch of microservices as I showed in, in the demo. It's now uh, no longer um, a bunch of stuff in one thing. It's now three things that run on separate servers. And uh, I fixed some bugs in peer tunnels so I could demo it because I broke it along the way. And then I just quickly fixed it to make a demo, but it's still kind of broken. <laughs> and uh, currently not blocked on anything. And I will pick my next tasks later. I currently. Uh, don't have any focus. Um, I'll choose when I the task when I see a good one. Cool. Uh, can we see if we have time at the end of the call to demo? Because uh, I know we're way over time already. Is it, does anyone have any questions for Matthew? I don't have any moment, but I didn't manage to watch the demos because of like a connection. I'll watch them after on the recording and. and open an issue or send you an email message. Thank you. Cool, okay, moving moving on. Uh, Rob, how are you doing? Hey, um, I don't know that there's anything in particular to report about being done or blocked, but my thing this morning is to finish the last little bit of ripping apart and rewriting the theme for the doc site, uh, which is not intended to be perfect or great. Like it probably needs a redesign in the end, but it's just to get it um, not super broken like it is now. It started with kind of a, a really ugly uh, hacky port of an MK docs theme. Um, and something that's buggy in it causes the CPU to go nuts and like it has some like frame animation loop that gets stuck. Um, so I'm just, tearing that apart and ripping out most of the JavaScript. So I just had to finish the last bit of that, which is basically the menu on the small screen this morning, um, and then work with Victor and Lars or whoever I need to work with to actually get that launched live at docs.ipfs.io. Um, and once that happens, hopefully this week, um, then that is the actual thing that I was originally supposed to deliver. Uh, so at that point, um, my involvement is going to ramp down from the half time I'm at now over the next few weeks to, to pretty much nothing. So I'll be floating around if people have big issues or concerns with it. Um, and I'm going to try and get a few other things done, um, like get some of the concept doc stuff we talked about in one of the workshops at uh, Berlin uh, into issues and kind of do a little bit of a proposal for how to better approach the HTTP API docs. Um, but otherwise that'll just be my slowly ramping down into not being here. So that's my status. Cool. Thanks Rob. Does anyone have any questions for Rob? 
Um, th thank yeah. you for, I, I just have a comment. Uh, thank you for jumping into that. Uh, as you say, it has been broken for a while, like pretty much unusable in, in almost like uh, shameful that like uh, embarrassing, not shameful, embarrassing that every time we run docs, like we cannot point people to it. Um, but there was like, um, that, like if you, given that you are like teaching that part of things, uh, one a uh, request from the past that is still important today is to have just like a generated version, like a generated markdown version of the docs. So if, you, if there is a way to have a, a, a template in which the docs that are generated through just docs can like exist in, in markdown, that would be amazing because then we could start relying on those to add it to the readme of the modules and like start publishing it to NPM. Right now, like the docs are always even in a, a URL. And so we, we don't really rely on just uh, One good thing is that I've seen that like people, especially the newly maintainers, uh, have been like more diligent on writing the JS docs annotations in like in the modules. Um, and so I think we are in the phase where like we should I just grab the momentum of like people excited to write more better docs and, and like make it so that when they write the JS docs annotations, it actually goes into the the markdown file that people consume to search for dogs. But yeah, maybe, I, like, maybe I'm not already asking too many things, but it's just, just something for you to, to keep in mind, Rob. Uh, the code in the doc site that will generate JS doc docs from uh, JS IPFS and JS IPFS API is there, it's just commented out because there's not really any meaningful JS doc for those libraries. And the, the doc site right now is is focused on just make the high level stuff that somebody new coming into it uh, needs make that part work well. Um, Cause I think somebody who's trying to get a good overall picture of IPFS and, and learn it is probably not going to understand even where to begin diving into like yes, IPFS repo or something. Got so, it. Got it. So the code so like, and the support for that is there. It's just commented out because it doesn't do anything useful at the moment. Cause we don't actually have those docs. <laughs> Got it. So I totally got it wrong. I thought that you were talking about the, the, the mini docs website that gets published with every module release uh, and not the docs that I prefer that I use. Now, now, I, now I see. Okay, got it. Thank you. That was my comment. Sorry. Um, yeah, I would love to go through if I get some time and do some JS docs for IPFS and IPFS API. I think that would be rare. Um, Cool. Uh, it's good to know that that's there. Thank you, Rob. Question? And just a short note on that. That would be awesome. I think one thing that I'm thinking about, but don't know that I'll ever have time to get to, but just to put it out here, um, it might be valuable to take the API doc section of the readme and replace it with some kind of placeholder and, and generate it from the JS doc also, because it's kind of structured that way anyway right now. Um, so that way we can generate like a much fancier JS doc output, but we can also generate something that we can from it. And that'll make that work seem less redundant when you're writing the JS docs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cool. Uh, right. Shall we move on? Who's next? Uh, Jacob, would you like to go? Yeah, I'll be quick. Um, so we did some updates for libpw switch last week that includes some bug fixes to protocol stats um, from Dimitri. And then um, Machi found a vulnerability with identifying switch. So that is fixed and published in 040.7 for switch. So make sure you upgrade to that. Um, we'll probably bump that version in um, libpw in the next release. Um, and then the private network initial release is out. Um, I'll be working this week on getting um, integration with IPFS repo and um, JS IPFS, um, but that still needs to get launched with libp2p, but that should be, that PR should be good to go. Um, and then I'll also be working on um, figuring out what's left for peer and content routing to get shipped. Any questions for me? Oh, and then Connection Manager also got merged for automatic start and stopping. Um, we just need to get that released in the next version of the PDP. Could I ask a question about, or maybe for people who are on the call or um, looking at this call uh, later date, peer private networking, can you maybe tell me what that is? 
really quickly? Yeah, so the private networking, all it is is we wrap all connection, all uh, connections in a uh, protector. So it does very, very basic encryption where we do, um, we give a pre-shared key to nodes, to, to IPFS nodes, and you just put that in the base of the repo. And then what that will do is it makes sure that when it's connecting to other peers, that those peer are in its swarm so that they're, they're valid. And so it's just to make sure that you're not talking to um, peers that are outside of your private network. Right, okay. And we didn't, we didn't have anything like that before? It's in Go, it's been live in Go, but it hasn't been live in, in JSIPFS. Okay, got it, got it. Cool, okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions for Jacob? Brad, okay. Uh, shall we move on to uh, Alex? Are you still here? Yeah, so I finished off the PRs for um, adding uh, raw leaf node support to MFS, uh, also printing uh, base 32 CIDs from the command line uh, and returning them from the API as streams. Uh, so which also meant improving CID v1 support in Unix FS engine because uh, it wasn't really there um, There's still a few loose ends to type around that, but I'm hoping we'll be able to get that most in probably tomorrow um, and I was continuing working on NPM on IF on IPFS uh, Basically taking the existing code uh, Trying to simplify it a bit modernize it and get it deployed somewhere. That's basically going to be the, the main thrust of this week Hoping we can get something deployed by the end of the week soon Cool. Thank you, Alex. Next quick fire, uh, Vasco. Hello. So regarding last week, uh, I was working in the interface IPFS core. I uh, solved all the code review for, from Alan. He added some comments today that I will finish also uh, later today. Then during the weekend, I managed to get the repo interoperability working. I created two PRs for uh, uh, GSIPFS, GSIPFS, repo, and interop. Uh, basically, I added the uh, data store spec file and uh, the data store default config, which are expected by the code image. Then uh, regarding the IPNS, uh, I got uh, earlier today the Go Publish and the GS resolve IPNS working. Uh, now I need to to get the the other side so GS to go IPNS interoperability, which currently is a problem for me. I'm trying to understand now what's the problem. So I'm blocked in the repo interop PRs. It would be really cool if they were merged as soon as possible because they are blocking the interoperability of APNS as well. Uh, and uh, so for this week, I want the interop uh, repo and IPNS interop as well to be almost finished. And uh, I've also uh, looked at around the repo migration tool and uh, there are some problems I think that I will need to discuss probably with the vid later because uh, uh, the repo version 6 of GS is not uh, the same v6 as uh, in Go because the v6 uh, of Go since the version 0.4.11 is uh, kind of different uh, between Go and GS, but I will talk with him later. And uh, I think it's almost it. Any questions? Cool, thanks, Vasco. Uh, we're going to leave questions for after, so we're moving on to Travis. Yeah, um, so <clears throat> last week uh, I spent some time going through and updating uh, IPTB uh, to use interfaces, uh, more consistently use interfaces and uh, build out uh, all, all the systems that it can, all the nodes that it can manage as plugins. Um, and so this makes makes IPTB a lot more generic. Um, so I'm going to continue working on that. There's a couple of little areas we're going to uh, split the interface up a little bit more to make it a little bit more generic. So not everything has to be implemented. Uh, update the CLI, uh, and I'm also going to be looking into uh, the first kind of way to to do JSIPFS with it. Um, 
So I know Victor uh, took a stab at this and it was ended up being kind of slow. Um, I'm going to potentially try to just because it's gonna be quick, uh, kind of do the same thing, see what, what it actually feels like, um, and then open up uh, an issue on it to kind of discuss other ways we could uh, could approach uh, running it. I think with the the daemon side, uh, the initial startup's fine, but it's the COI that really kind of uh, gets in the way of having these kind of like one second uh, parsing times. Uh, that might just be able to be solved through um, taking COI, quickly converting it to HTTP request, and then and then making a, a natural request across, basically making the, the COI a lot thinner, so it doesn't have to parse the entire uh, node. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what I did. Nice, thank you, Travis. Um, who we got next? Uh, Hugo. So last week I uh, took some time off, so I didn't get that much done, but I still managed to work on the getting started section on JS IPFS.io and also trying to figure out how to support relative URLs on Gatsby so we can load the site the sites through IPFS. Uh, both uh, tasks are uh, half done. Uh, the first one is working well on the dev environment, but once we get to the uh, production builds, uh, everything kind of falls apart because we Gatsby uses the old Uglify version, so we need to bundle uh, JS IPFS with only ES5 uh, features and all that jazz. So uh, you're I, we can I can have like two solutions. Either I try to update Gatsby to the last version, um, or I try to include the, um, the experimental builds from Azure on JS IPFS uh, on a JS IPFS release, and kind of trying to figure out which one is the best one for now and to be able to finish this stuff in time. And also I'm still trying to make Gatsby support related URLs. I have it done for all the, almost all the assets, uh, um, but I'm having trouble uh, getting it to work with the JS files. Uh, so I'll probably work on this stuff for the rest of the week until everything is ready to, to the, the web summit. Uh, and ho hopefully I'll have some time to do something else, but uh, I think uh, I'll focus 100% on this to get this done. So that's it. Nice, thank you, Hugo. Um, we are eight minutes over. If anyone else would like to stay on the call, then you are welcome um, for questions, but you are free to go if you would like to go. Um, we have some extra people here. Uh, we have Mike and Alvin. If you'd like to say hi, then um, please do now. Uh, hi. <clears throat> I was just here to listen, so I don't have anything else to say. You're quite welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> cool. Uh, all right, um, in which case, I think we're all done and we can move on to IRCs and uh, GitHub issues, but thank you very much all for coming and... Um... Can, I, can I just uh, ask, I have been like posting some questions slash comments slash suggestions on the chat to like as people share their updates. If people could just act that they saw that, that would be super helpful. Um, or copy paste, that, so that you don't lose it. Uh, Alvin, is your first time in this call? Do you want to say hi? Ready? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I just Sorry. Uh, to listen. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, welcome. Uh, as you see, like this call typically goes very fast. We do a lot of updates. Uh, yeah. Today was kind of like a little bit more messy because the um, the JPFS, the IPFS Allens uh, ate it a little bit plus we had some peer pad hiccups. But typically we do it in 30 minutes. Okay. <laughs> and thank you so much for hosting us, Alan. This is fun. And thank you everyone for those things. <coughs> okay, go JS team. Hooray! Good team. Bye. Bye. <laughs>